Mr. President, I come here, you know, frustrated, angry, uh, disturbed, that our Republican colleagues are holding up three crucial bills. And America needs to hear this. They are stopping us from completing our work on our emergency FEMA bill. The monies are needed throughout this country to rebuild the damage from the storm, a lot of it infrastructure, sewer plants, water plants, roads, bridges, highways. We see pictures of what is happening in places like Vermont, where, as Senator Leahy told us yesterday, a woman that he talked to has to drive an hour and plus for her chemotherapy because the road is gone and it used to take her five minutes. We need to fix that road. We need to fix the roads, the bridges, the highways, the sewer systems, the water systems, the schools that get harmed in these natural disasters. And the Republicans are holding up the bill to let us do that. We have holes on more than one. The highway bill, known as the transportation bill, and the FAA, our nation's aviation bill. And here's the, the real shocker. The FAA and the transportation bill, which have been merged into one bill, have come over from the House of Representatives, and the House relented on the numbers. They are at current levels of spending. They are clean extensions, which we wanted, but the Republicans over here will not let us get to those bills. Now, tomorrow, the FAA authorization for the uh, airports, to fix up the airports, rebuild the airports, that expires. So there's no fee as of tomorrow, and we have to stop midstream our airport improvements that are going on. It's called the Airport Improvement Fund. They already shut that down once. I went around my state and saw projects, safety projects, stop midstream, and now they're doing it again, right over here. The Republicans, right over here. Holding up the FAA bill again. And it means 70,000 jobs lost on Friday night. They're holding up the highway bill, the transportation bill, which I'm so proud in our committee. We got the extension. Everybody agreed to it, Republicans and Democrats in the committee. Republicans are holding it up now on this floor. It's a clean extension. It's 1.8 million jobs, everybody. 1.8 million jobs are relying on that extension. It's come over here from the House. Take it up and pass it. Oh, no. Oh, no. There they go again. Stopping progress in this country. And I'll tell you why I'm so particularly frustrated. It has to do with the rebuilding that's going on and that has gone on in Iraq and Afghanistan. With American dollars, not one Republican ever objected. And let me show you the pictures. Let me show you the pictures. This is a picture, uh, Mr. President, of a new water treatment plant that's been built in Nasiriyah, Iraq, at a cost of 277 million American dollars. Not one Republican said, stop this. Not one Republican said, pay for it by cutting some other program. What's going on? Let me show you the picture of a water treatment plant near the border of Mexico in my state in California. It's old. I visited this treatment plant. It got hurt in an earthquake. And FEMA, the bill they're holding up, will pay to finish up this water treatment plant, which has got to be fixed before another earthquake hits us. And we know that's what's happening. So they were fine with building a water treatment plant in Iraq, not a complaint, 
not a murmur, not a word, not an amendment, but we have to fix our water treatment plants here with FEMA bill, and they're holding the bill up. And everybody knows that, because we could have taken care of that yesterday. So that's an example. Here's another example. This is a picture of road construction in, I, I want to say this right, Kapisa province, Afghanistan. Everyone is very proud America has built a road there. We have spent a lot of tax dollars in Afghanistan and Iraq. And I'm happy for the people there that they have a road. And God, we pray that nobody blows it up. But I got to tell you, if you're going to build roads in Afghanistan, you better build roads here in America, or the American people are going to rise up and say, who are you fighting for? I never heard one Republican say, oh, they're building a road in Afghanistan. That's an earmark. That's an earmark. Let's stop it. That's a problem. Let's stop it. We're spending X number of dollars. Let's cut another program. Never a word. But now we have our highway bill right now coming over from the House. They changed their mind over there. They did not cut it. It's current levels of funding. It's a good bill. It will last for six months funding. It will preserve 1.8 million jobs. And the Republicans are holding it up right now. Why do you think this chamber is empty? Why do you think I'm here letting off steam? Because we're not voting. Let us vote. You don't like the highway bill? Vote against it. You don't like it? That's fine. Vote against it. Let us vote. 90 people will vote for it, probably. Let us vote. So here you have the picture of the excitement around a new road. And let's take a look at another picture of a road in my home state. In January and February of 2010, Mr. President, California was hit by terrible winter storms and flooding and mudslides. This picture shows a road that was blocked after these storms. Now, these storms hit us in many counties, Imperial, Los Angeles, Riverside, Calaveras, San Bernardino, Siskiyou. All of these counties declared emergencies. They're all waiting for the funds to rebuild a road that looks like this. Impassable, shutting people down. A lot like the roads in Vermont now in other places. They're holding up the FEMA bill. They're holding up the highway bill. They're holding up the federal aviation bill. And it's wrong. I never heard them say, strike that road that we're building in Afghanistan. It's an earmark. But they're holding up. They're holding up the three bills we need to do. So now I'm going to show you another program. This is a brand new air traffic control tower being built in Mosul, Iraq, at a cost of $10 million. You can see it's almost ready. The scaffolding is on it. It's been built. I never heard one Republican say, oh, wait a minute. Let's strike some other money somewhere else to pay for this air traffic control tower. I never heard one Republican object to building this air control tower in Iraq. Not a word. But when it comes to our air traffic control towers, you heard plenty. They stopped us from moving ahead with the FAA reauthorization before we left for the summer break. It resulted in 70,000 people being laid off. And here's one of my towers in Palm Springs. Stopped in the middle, shut down in the middle. The workers had to leave. They lost money, the contractor did. 
the workers, some of them went off to other jobs, they had to hire new workers. I stood in front of this tower. I stood in front of a tower in Oakland. I went to Los Angeles and saw the work stoppages that occurred on the Tom Bradley new terminal because the Republicans shut us down. And now today, we come back, we all think we have a new attitude around this place. We're, we're shut down again. And we have 24 hours to get this FAA bill done. Or 70,000 workers will be out again. And we have until September 30th to pass the transportation bill, or 1.8 million workers will be out of work. Now, we have heard complaints from the other side as to why they're holding it up. So let me uh, give you some of that argument. One of our senators from Oklahoma, Senator Coburn, says he wants to hold up the transportation bill, which includes transportation and FAA, because he doesn't like one part of the program. 2% of the funds go to things he doesn't like. Well, he has every right to that opinion and every right to work with us on an amendment and get it done. But he's holding it up. We could have had that amendment yesterday. He doesn't like the Transportation Enhancements Program. And for the record, there are a number of things in that portion, which is a relatively small amount of the bill, 2% of the bill, and we are reforming that section next year when we get to the new bill. But he's holding it up. Now, he's wrong to hold it up because of what I told you. He's putting at risk all of these safety improvements at our airports. He's putting at risk, you know, 1.8 million jobs on the transportation bill. He's putting at risk 70,000 jobs on FAA because he doesn't like this program. Now, he also misled people. He said that we spent 10% of our transportation money on this transportation enhancements program, we do not, we spend 2%. 10% is not 2%. He went on to say that safety should be a top priority, and we agree. But he doesn't understand what the transportation enhancements program is. It is about safety. It is about safety. The transportation enhancements program is mainly about saving lives by preventing bicycle and pedestrian fatalities. That's what it does. It says to the states, we have a pot of money here. If you want it, you need to make sure you make safety improvements for pedestrians and bicyclists. Pedestrians and bicyclists account for 13% of traffic fatalities world nationwide, with more than 47,000 pedestrians killed in the nine-year period 2000 to 2009. That's equivalent of a jumbo jet crashing every month. So the safety enhancements supported by the program Senator Coburn wants to eliminate are needed to prevent these deaths. Bike paths and pedestrian walkways are important. 50% of trips are three miles or less. 12% of all trips are made by bicycling and walking. And bicycle commuting has increased by more than 40% between 2000 and 2008. So why on earth does he want to hold up this critical bill and the FAA bill, because they're married together, to say he's for safety when he wants to eliminate this whole program, which is dedicated to safety for our pedestrians and our bicyclists, 47,000 of whom uh, perished because we don't have these safety enhancements in place. All Americans benefit from the program he wants to eliminate. We strengthen local economies, we improve the quality of life, we protect the environment, and he's willing still 
because that's what he's doing by holding this up. He's risking shutting down our nation's entire sur for surface transportation system as well as critical FAA programs and more than a million jobs because he doesn't like this program. Well, you know something? Every one of us here has, we have pretty big egos. You know, you get here and yeah, it's important. Set it aside. You don't like something, offer an amendment. Don't hold up all of these bills. It's wrong. Because if we do what they did, shutting down the FAA, it makes a rough economy rougher. And it stalls us from doing the work we have to do. No one stalled the airport's improvements in Iraq. No one stalled over there on the Republican side the road improvements in Iraq. No one stopped improvements in Afghanistan. No one stopped water system improvements in the war zones. But somehow, when it comes to America, well, we better cut this and cut that and offset this and offset that. We have a budget, we're gonna live by it. We have an emergency. If you look at Webster's dictionary's explanation of what an emergency is, here it is. This is Webster's definition. An emergency, one, an unforeseen combination of circumstances or the resulting state that calls for immediate action. Mr. President, Webster's Dictionary has it right. This ought to be put on the desk of every one of my Republican colleagues. Another definition, an urgent need for assistance or relief. So when there's an emergency, you step up to the plate and you solve the problem. Just ask Senator Landrieu, who's been leading the battle on this FEMA bill. You can't tell people out there that they only have 30 days of funding because you have to enter into a contract. It may take three, four months to rebuild a bridge. It may take six or seven months to rebuild a water treatment system. But that's the way they approach it over there when it comes to America. When it comes to funding wars and rebuilding these, the zones, I don't hear a peep out of them, not a peep. Well, I say it's time for America. We have a choice. We can stand up for America right now, today. We can pass these three bills. The FEMA bill, which gives our governors the assurances and our people in the states the assurances that FEMA will team with them and do what it takes to rebuild after these hor horrifying emergencies, which, by the way, are becoming more and more frequent because of climate change, but that's another battle for another day. I mean, that's another battle for another day. Unfortunately, science in this body here takes a back seat to politics. And the special interests who want to say, oh, climate change, no big deal. We need to protect our turf. That's what they say. And we've done nothing. The president has done what he can. And bless him for it. Fuel economy, all these things, but it gets worse and worse and worse. We've done nothing. I tell you, for my, I got four grandkids, and I am so <laughs> hoping in the rest of the time that I have to be here in this body and on this earth that I can get us moving on this climate change. But oh no. So I guess we sit back while we see more and more extreme weather emergencies. And we see extreme weather emergencies. If the other side doesn't want to do anything about the cause of it, fine. That's their choice. They have to live with themselves. They can at least help us adapt to these problems. And that means paying to fix up our roads, bridges, highways, our water systems, our sewer systems, all of these things that get exposed to these weather emergencies. And in the longer run, do you know, Mr. President, that 70% of our highways excuse me, of our bridges are deficient. 70% of our bridges are deficient. And I want to thank my ranking member, Senator Inhofe, on the Environment and Public Works Committee. 
He and I don't see the eye to eye on the environment. That's an understatement. But when it comes to the infrastructure, we agree. And he talks about the tragic death of a woman. A young woman was, was walking. And a, and, and a bridge literally fell apart, and, and, and it fell and, and killed her. Now, this is America. 70% of our bridges are deficient, and we have colleagues holding up this bill. I say shame on them, shame on them for doing that. It's outrageous. We finally get the House to come to us, to our number, to free spending. I thank them for that. They came to their senses. They realized that we need to build our highways. We need to maintain our airports. They send us a bill that's good. On FEMA, they're not so good. On FEMA, they're doing a bad thing over there. They're trying to cut programs that create jobs to pay for these emergencies. That's a whole other deal. But right here today, we have a bill for FEMA that will do the job. You know, I said in my last talk about FEMA, the emergency, uh, emergencies that we face is, if your neighbor's house is on fire, don't, don't waste time and fight about the cost of the garden hose. You'll get that later. Your garden hose helps them and you feel they are a part owner, you can discuss it later. Get out the, the garden hose, put out the fire, and everybody is going to be OK. Playing games with these things, Mr. President, is not right. It is beneath the dignity of the people of America who think we are a bunch, let me repeat, who do not rate us very highly. That's an understatement, too. How much lower can you go than 13%? Well, I would say this. If we can't do these bills, we don't deserve to be 13% popular. We don't. We have certain basic responsibilities. And I am sick and tired of paying for roads and bridges and embassies and buildings and everything else in Iraq and Afghanistan. We have given those people our finest. They have bled. They are still bleeding. And they have to take responsibility for their own nation. We have to take responsibility now for our nation. Time is short. If the Senate doesn't pass that highway bill, 1.8 million highway and transit jobs are at risk. If the Senate doesn't pass the FAA bill, by tomorrow, 70,000 jobs are at stake. And we saw what happened. I visited the airports. It was tragic to see people saying, I had no job. I went to work. Because these are all private sector jobs, mostly. There are some government jobs, for example, the FAA inspectors, some of which paid on their own dime to fly across the country and inspect some of the projects. God bless them. And we better pay them for what we did here. And my understanding is this bill doesn't do that, but, but Congressman Micah claims he's going to take care of that. But we're about to do it again over here if Republicans don't come to their senses. So in summing up, this is a day for us to make a clear point that America has to start taking care of its people. We all read the papers. We know what's happening to the middle class. We know what's happening to the poor. We know what's happening to our roads. We know what's happening to our bridges. We know that our airport system is the last century. We have to have next gen. We have to move to a GPS system away from a radar system. They say no, 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 no. And it. it, it, it the message has to go out to the American people. They blame everybody, and I don't blame them. But right now, it's clear. The Democrats in the Senate want to pass three bills right now. They're all very important. 
One of them is the emergency FEMA bill to pay for these terrible disasters that have been hitting us. Those are emergencies, and we need to go ahead and respond. Two, a highway bill to fix our deficient bridges, to fix our highways and our roads that are 50% deficient. In other words, half of them are not up to standard. We are living off our grandparents' investments at this point. We have got to invest in our infrastructure and all the jobs that come with it. So we have those three bills. FAA and highway have been merged. And then you have the FEMA bill. We are sitting around here not voting. Everybody look at this chamber. No one is here. No voting is taking place because we are the subject of a filibuster, which means a big stall. And again, I ask my friends on the other side, where was your outrage when we were building roads and highways and bridges and airports in Iraq and Afghanistan? Where was your outrage about the money? Where was your outrage about cutting something else to pay for that? Where was your outrage? I'll tell you, I never saw it, I never felt it, I never heard it. And it is, in a way, humiliating for the American people that somehow they are just not as important. Well, I'm here to tell you, you are important. Your jobs are important. Your work is important. America as an economic leader is important. And so I'll be back on the floor to debate any one of my colleagues on the other side who disagree with anything I've said, and that's fine. They may disagree. They may defend why they allow projects to go through abroad but not here. They may say why they want to cut safety uh, programs from the highway bill that will save lives. And by the way, that transportation enhancements program that they want to do away with was a bipartisan uh, idea that came from Republican John Chafee and Democrat Daniel Patrick Moynihan in 1991. 1991. That sounds like 20 years to me. 20 years we've had that program. Can we look at it? Can we reform it? Can we make it work better? Of course. But don't just stand up here. By the way, one of our Republican friends said, just cut it and you don't even need a vote. Just take it without a vote. No. If we're going to vote on that, we're going to fight about it and have a vote. But let's have a vote. Every minute that this chamber sits idly, let me tell you what's happening outside in the real world. This is the fake world in here. In the real world, people are calling one another. What are they doing over there? We have a chance to get these bills done fast. What are they doing? Finally, we get a bill that comes over from the House that is bipartisan, that is a freeze, that has everything intact, that sends a message. We can move forward with FAA for four months, six months on the highway bill, and we can't get it done. So I urge my Republican friends to change their mind and change their tune and stand up for America and let us get on with the business of taking care of this country, its highways, its bridges, its roads, its airports, its emergencies. And if they do that, you know, maybe we'll see the American people have a little more faith in us because right now they have lost faith. And I don't blame them one bit. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I yield the floor and I note the absence of a quorum.